Now we can look at something called the reaction quotient, which is set up just like the equilibrium constant expression, um, where you have products over reactants raised to a stoichiometric coefficients, except now you're not at equilibrium. So you can just plug in initial conditions. And the whole point is you're going to compare Q and K and figure out in which direction the reaction is going to shift. Uh, so if Q equals K, you're at equilibrium. Um, if K, if you always put K on the left and Q on the right, the arrow will tell you which way the reaction is shifting. Um, so it's, it's basically saying, do you have too many reactants? You have to use up those reactants to make more products in order to reach equilibrium, or do you have too many products and you want to use those up um, to make more reactants in order to reach equilibrium? So you can just compare the numbers of Q versus K and figure out which way the reaction is shifting. So if they're equal, you're at equilibrium. If K is less than Q, then it shifts towards uh, the reactants. That means you have too many products. Because remember, this is products over reactant. So if this is bigger, then you have more products you want to shift towards the reaction, uh, towards the reactants. If K is greater than Q, then you're going to make more products. So let's see. Um, here we have the equilibrium constant K for the for this reaction is 50.5. Predict in which direction the reaction will proceed in order to reach equilibrium. That's your hint that this is a Q versus K problem when they ask you to predict the direction in which the reaction proceeds. Um, so when you hear that, then think, I have to calculate a Q. Right, so there, right there, predict the direction oops, in which the reaction proceeds. So they give you all of these uh, equilibrium, or sorry, all these initial concentrations. You're going to plug them into your um, Q expression, again, which looks just like the K expression, except now you're not at equilibrium. So you still have products of reactants, raised to the stoichiometric coefficients, plug everything in. So in this case, you get 1.3. You compare that to the K, which is 50.5. 50.5 is greater than 1.3, so the reaction shifts towards the products. And that's it. All right, so let's look at 15.4, which is the Chatelier's principle. Uh, the Chatelier's principle, uh, what's, what's happening here is you're disturbing the system in some way. You're either changing the, adding, uh, changes the concentration of your reactants or products, you can increase the concentration, you can decrease the concentration. Um, you're changing pressure, you're changing temperature. And each one of those changes disturbs the equilibrium. It's going to want to shift in one direction or, or another. So, so it's either going to shift towards the reactants or towards the products. And sometimes you can change something and it doesn't affect the reaction at all. It's, it doesn't affect the equilibrium, so we'll say that there's no shift. So these are different things that you can do. Um, so how can you, you know, if you change the concentration, how does that uh, affect things? So if you add something, if you add the concentration, increase the concentration, it's going to shift away from that. So suppose I added um, uh, A here. So if I increase an A, A is a reactant, right? A is a reactant. So if I increase an A, it's going, now I have too much A. I want to use up A, and I'm going to shift away from it, and I'm going to make more products. So if I added A, I would make more products. Um, so the reaction would shift to the right. What if I removed A? Well, now if I remove A, well, then I want to make some more of A. So it would shift towards A. And so I would go towards the reactants, that sort of thing. So we'll do a bunch of examples like this. Um, so adding or subtracting co concentration. So if you increase the concentration of something, shift away from it. If you remove that concentration, then you want to make more of it. So then you want to shift towards it. You can also change the volume, which will also affect the pressure. So if you decrease the volume, suppose I decrease the volume here, um, I want to shift the side that has fewer moles of gas. So if I decrease the volume, now, now I don't have as much space, so I, I want to have fewer molecules floating around there. Um, so in this case, let's see, you're, you're just going to look at the number of moles of, of reactants and products. So I have three moles of reactants, so I have one plus two, I have three moles of reactants, and I have four moles of products. So if I decrease the volume, I want to go to the side that has fewer moles of gas. If I decrease the volume, I want to go towards the left in this case. If I increase the volume, then I want to go to the side that has more moles of gas, so I go towards the right. Uh, remember that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So if a lot of times you can, um, you're, you're changing the, the, the pressure by changing the volume or, or vice versa. So if you increase volume, it's the same as decreasing pressure. So if I increase the volume, that's like decreasing the pressure. So how do I raise the pressure? I'm going to go to the side that has more moles of gas. So it's, it's the same, same idea as what we have up here. Now temperature, 
how temperature affects things is going to depend on if you have an exothermic or endothermic reaction. Remember that endothermic, um, the delta H is positive, and exothermic, the delta H is negative. Um, and so if you have an endothermic reaction, endothermic means heat is going into the reaction, so treat heat like a reactant, and then follow the rules over here. If, if I um, so for this one, we have an endothermic reaction, so I'm going to add heat on this side. So suppose I have heat over here. Now if I increase the uh, temperature, that's like adding heat. So if I increase the temperature, that's like adding heat. So I'm going to shift it towards the right, that sort of thing. If I um, decrease the heat, then by lowering the temperature, um, I'm going to shift the reaction to the left. And then exothermic, if you have an exothermic reaction, then you would put heat on the product side and then do the same thing. Treat it like it's a, um, if you're adding heat by increasing the temperature, you know, how would that shift things? There are a few things that won't change the, the, the position of the equilibrium. Uh, if you add an inert gas, and inert gas is just a gas that's not involved in the reaction, then it's not going to have any effect on the equilibrium. Um, and if you add a catalyst, there'll, there'll be no shift as well. Catalysts are just going to make you reach equilibrium faster. Um, but it doesn't change the position of the equilibrium. So let's try some examples here. So we have this reaction. Uh, so for this reaction, it is endothermic. So right away, what you can do is look at the delta H. If it's positive, put heat over here as a reactant. If it's negative, make heat a, a product. Now, um, chlorine is removed. So if I remove something, I want to shift towards it. So if I remove my chlorine, I want to make more chlorine. So I'm going to shift to the right. Uh, in this case, okay, so, so for part A, you go to, to the right towards products. If the temperature is decreased, that's like removing heat. If I remove something, I want to shift towards it. So this one is going to go towards the left, towards the reactants. Any of these symbols is fine. You say right, it's, or the arrow, or the products, or left, arrow, product, reactants. Either one is fine to write. Um, the volume of the reaction, is, if, so if I is increase, so if I increase the volume, I want to go to the side that has more moles of gas. So here I have one mole on this side, I have two moles over here, uh, so I'm going to go towards the right in this case, towards the products. And then BCL3 is added, so if I add one of my products, I'm going to shift away from my products, I'm going to make more reactants, so I'm going to go towards the left. So pause the video now and you should try uh, this next one on your own and see what happens and see if you get this concept. All right, so again, I have another endothermic reaction, so heat's going to go over here. If it was exothermic, it would be a product, so I have, I have um, endothermic, so heat's a, a reactant. So now what am I doing here? If I, um, if I, oops, if I add some reactants, I'm going to shift towards the products. All right, so if I add N2O4, I shift towards the products. If I remove some products, then I have to make more products, so that's going to go to the right again as well. Um, the pressure is increased by adding N2. Well, N2 is not in this formula at all. I have N2O4, but I don't have N2 by itself. Um, so because it's not in the reaction at all, there's no shift. That's an inert gas. It's, it's not going to affect the um, position of the equilibrium at all. Uh, what if I increase the volume? If you increase the volume, you go to the side with more moles of gas. So increasing volume is the same as decreasing the pressure. How do I increase the pressure? I go to the side that has more moles of gas. Um, so up here I have one mole of my reactants, I have two moles of my products, so I'm going to, I'm going to shift towards the products. And the last one, uh, the temperatures decrease, so decreasing temperatures like removing heat. So if I remove this heat, I want to shift to make more heat, so I'm going to go towards the left. So if you remove a reactant, um, you try to replace it. Okay, the very last thing we have to talk about in this chapter um, is catalysts. And all I'm saying here is catalyst is something that's going to increase the, um, the rate at which you reach equilibrium, but it doesn't change um, the composition of the equilibrium. So it doesn't change where it happens, it just makes you get there faster. So remember, it provides a, uh, a different mechanism, uh, a different pathway for the molecules to, to interact in order to reach equilibrium. So it's going to have a lower activation energy. But if you look at the equilibrium, it's still going to reach equilibrium in the same place. So catalysts usually increase the rate of the forward and the reverse rate.